Welcome to my moon video. The moon's quite a fascinating thing and I've been taking quite a lot of pictures of it during lockdown. There's a lot to be said about the moon. David Niven said the moon was a balloon, which it's not. And it's been said that the moon might be made of green cheese, which it's not. David Icke thinks it's hollow. Who knows? But what I've been doing is taking photos of the thing, and that's what we're interested in here. When you're taking pictures of something like the moon, it can be quite tricky. Um, it's a bright thing in a dark place. And if you just take a picture of the whole night sky, the moon tends to come out as a blob. And it's hard to take a picture of it and anything around it. So what you want is either to take a picture of it with the moon in a dark black inky black sky and then get the best moon as possible. Or take it in the surroundings, but accept that your moon is going to be a bit nondescript. But what the camera's trying to do is to compensate for all that bright light in the middle of a dark picture and it's trying to spread that exposure all over the photo so it's trying to lighten up the dark bits as well and in lightening up the dark bits which if it's a black sky it's never going to do it also lightens up the moon until you end up with a blob now if you accept it as a blob like the middle picture here which is some fairly low resolution and I will try and find a better one of that for a new version of this video um, you can get a nice looking picture, nice night sky, columns, all there, but the moon is, is just a glow. The only time you're really going to get this to work is if the moon is in crescent. That means there's not too much light coming from it, and there's not too much detail to be seen on it. So even though it's a crescent shape, what you can see is overexposed. You can't see any craters or anything, but it's not so overexposed that it overpowers the rest of the image you'll find most star-based photography, there is no moon in it, unless it's a crescent moon. At the bottom of this page here, there is a link that takes you to a Guardian site, which talks more about photographing the moon. It's worth having a look at. The metering modes are kind of important here, just understanding them a bit. And if you have a look at the metering modes within your camera, and here's three different makes up at the top and what they look like, but they essentially do the same thing. Some have three metering modes, some have four metering modes, but you've basically got a wide angle, a middle and a close up. So basically, in something like a landscape, the whole picture is important in terms of the light. So you need a metering mode that's going to suit that. And that's when your evaluative matrix metering, your wide view, will suit that. On something like a portrait, it's the person's face in the middle that's important. And therefore, the rest of the picture, it doesn't matter if it's a bit too light or too dark, as long as that middle bit's right. So your centre weighted one will be perfect for that. So really, the spot metering is when you want to make sure that absolutely the little bit in the middle of the picture or whatever it is you're focusing on is right, regardless of what happens anywhere else. And that works perfectly for a moonshot or a moonshot that's in the distance. Now, with a regular camera, when you haven't got much in the way of zoom, you won't be able to fill up a whole screen. And once you've taken your picture and it's nice and sharp and it's in that black sky and you think, well, I'll zoom in to make that a bit, you know, show it up a bit better, you'll find out it's, it ends up looking a bit blurred. It might simply be that you can't get closer because your camera's not powerful enough. Or it will hopefully just be the case you need a bit of post-processing. So sharpening and contrast are the two main tools I use here. So if you look at this picture, I use spot metering. I didn't really need to because I've got a times 50 optical zoom on my bridge camera. And with it, some extra digital zoom on top of that, I was able to fill the screen with the moon. And really that's an, enough there that I didn't, didn't need the spot setting. I could have used one of the other settings. But it's worth exploring. You need to steady yourself as well. Um, you can use a tripod or what I often do for, the, for all of these is simply lean up against the window frame with my camera poking out 
and to actually put the camera's body or lens a lot touching the window frame itself and then with my own moving or breathing the camera stays still once the photo is taken a um, little bit of post-processing again sharpening um, contrast adjustment that starts to bring up some of the details so there's quite a nice variation this is exactly the same photo it's just been through that bit of post-processing I wanted to point out my camera as a bridge camera because it's not a special thing it's not a DSLR it's a kind of mid-range camera it's got a, a an optical zoom on it of a decent size and that means I can get fairly close without losing too much in the web detail and then this is my best one yet this did this last night this was taken on the 2nd of June and I decided to try a, a bit with the exposure settings so this little button with the plus and minus symbol will give you the exposure settings and that will give you a little meter to the side and you can either go up or down and by going down and decreasing it you're able to darken the picture a bit and again it just absorbs some of that light and therefore it brings out a bit more detail and this is the first time I've been able to see and you, without anything to point with on here it's hard to say but right in the middle of the picture there is a little crescent shape of craters that I've just never been able to see before now most of the time you're going to find you can't get that close your camera is not going to be perhaps up to it unless you've got some special equipment and you're more likely to end up with something like this a small moon nice and sharp but in a big black screen that big black screen makes it quite easy to merge with other photos so this starling and this moonshot the moon's I don't know times 20 zoom I suppose and the bird sat next door on the roof was the full times 50 and then perhaps a bit more from where I was sitting I couldn't see any of this detail on that bird and it was a starling from its shape but I couldn't see the green on its wings I couldn't see the spots I could just see the shape of it as a silhouette and to make this work the explanation is here but it's also in the VLE on the photography site but it's laying one picture on top of another and then turning the top one kind of transparent and it mentions the settings here in the layers panel there's a little button with the word normal on it and if you go in there you'll have all sorts of settings and you just try them out and they mix the moon in in different ways and in this particular setting here it's taking away it's ignoring all the dark and it's only leaving the moon to show through and then i can reposition that moon anywhere i like in the picture the plane by the way is an f-15 eagle coming into land at lake and heath air base which i live next door to this one's taken down the end of the road um, done in exactly the same way what's worth noticing as it says in the text here is how the tone of the picture the moon has taken on the tone of the sky this is kind of unrealistic you would never see the moon like this if the sun was in that position it would be more of a thin crescent or just totally a new moon anyway you wouldn't see it so it's not realistic but it's come out as a nice kind of image back to one of my earlier macro photos and merging with this moonshot choosing a different setting this one keeps the black rather than making it disappear like before i was able to use it almost like a stencil lay over the apple and just darken any areas off where some of that apple did show through in the blackness it makes quite a nice image and these are some of the different moon phases uh, throughout april i couldn't take many through may because may seemed to be mainly in a new moon phase and it's only at the start and at the end of it that I could actually see much of the moon or it was around the other side of my house so these are all different sizes different colors that's just different zoom magnifications um, and the colors are either atmospheric or different exposure settings and here I've just arranged them into slightly different configurations it's all a bit 2001 so next I'm planning on taking a photograph of the moon with a telescope so when I've done how to go with that, I'll update this video. 
see you then.